Uh, well, and good morning and a warm welcome to everybody here at Deutsches Film Institute. My name is Claudia Dillmann. I'm the director of the Film Institute and the Film Museum. And of course, I'm quite happy that colleagues from our our colleagues from Cinematheques in Amsterdam, Bologna, Brussels and Copenhagen as well from important film institutions in France and Germany meet here today to discuss film literacy issues. My special thanks goes to the speakers of today's workshop, Ignazi Guardans uh, and Lisette Karlshofen, who took the way from Brussels and Amsterdam to share their expertise about rights issues in film education with us. I'd also like to thank Enrica Serrani, uh, coordinator of the AB Cinema Project, Georg Eckes and Kerstin Hart, who will present two other European projects, whose joint approach is, although they are different in uh, scope, to unlock Europe's film heritage and make it available um, for education, research, leisure and of course fun as well. During the, la uh, the years when I served as president of ACE in the as Association des Cinematiques Européennes, we all lobbied hard to create better conditions for digitizing and giving access to Europe's film heritage by initiating projects like the European Film Gateway Forward or AB Cinema and by trying to convince the Commission that we truly need a, let's say, more modern copyright framework in order to open up our collections. We had indeed some success, uh, for example, with Orphan Works but there is still no harmonized copyright exception for education and research in Europe, which could meet the needs of users in the digital environment. Recently, and only recently, film literacy has become a more important topic on the European level. The Commission launched the study showing films and other audiovisual content in schools. The media program provides funding for film literacy and audience development projects. That's why we are able to meet today in the frame of the AB Cinema project. And the publication of the European Framework for Film Education shows that the importance of film literacy is now recognized, something we think uh, is long overdue in, overdue in educational systems and practices. So we must keep trying to make sure that these activities are sustainable. And I'm convinced that film archives, cinematics and comparable film institutions do play a major role in both developing a, re re a reliable structure as well as innovative formats for film literacy in Europe, structure and formats. We are a partner for schools, kindergartens and in non-formal education. Cinematics are per se places to learn and to teach about film, its history, aesthetics, grammar, its social and political impact. Cinematics are per se educational institutions with a clearly defined public mission to promote film culture and film literacy. The Deutsches Film Institute offers educational activities since 32 years. For example, our permanent uh, exhibition, which serves as a learning place, 
our film festivals, school film programs, workshops, summer schools, pilot projects and teacher training both in and outside our premises. We develop, test, evaluate and improve our film literacy uh, activities. Something, and this we have to keep in mind, which is not possible in temporary projects. We are coaching a huge number of kids, young people and teachers. Last year, we counted more than 275,000 visitors to our museum and our festivals and another 180,000 to our exhibitions on tour around the world. We attract more than 1 million visits to our websites per year, tendency increasing. With, let's say, dedication and tireless energy, we try to inspire the next generation with our love to cinema, as especially European cinema. So as cinematics or film heritage institutions, we offer a sustainable infrastructure, both staff and location-wise, which is a prerequisite not a prerequisite uh, for providing high quality in film literacy. <clears throat> we also provide expertise, can use our own collections, hold rights to some extent, and have built over the years a large network ranging from kindergartens to schools to higher education institutions. Through European cooperation in projects like AB Cinema, we now benefit from best practices of our colleagues and the exchange of experiences. According to your study, Mr. Cordanz, uh, the impact of our film literacy activities is only local which sounds a bit strange in my eyes, looking at our figures, numbers, uh, activities. But thanks to the awareness of media, the media program that can be changed, if it's correct, if your uh, results are correct, at least it can be changed. And not only uh, temporarily, but permanently. Precisely because cinematics are facing uh, big challenges requiring expertise to cope with, we need highly skilled staff. And not only in the educational field. Therefore, the Deutsches Film Institute, together with the Goethe Uni Universität here in Frankfurt, we three years ago launched uh, and designed uh, master studies in film culture. And I warmly welcome the participants and our students here in the audience. I consider these students as ambassadors, uh, which is a primary concept, as far as I know, in the second project year of AB Cinema to foster exchange on European level. So good luck to you all. Thanks for your attention. Have a successful day with productive and exciting discussions. Thank you. Good morning also from my side. Um, I too wish to welcome the partners in the ABC Cinema Network most heartily and of course also those participants and guests who have came here independently, for example from the German Film Academy in Berlin. Part of the exchange in the AB Cinema Network is getting to know each other's institutions and respective film education programs, not only through their internet presences, but in person, which makes a big difference. And Daniela Dietrich, Hannah Schreier and I were really proud and happy yesterday to be able to present our lovely building, of course we're proud of it, and our comprehensive program on the occasion of this workshop.
Tomorrow at our internal meeting, we shall continue to develop the ambassador idea, but perhaps we'll be saying a little bit about it, Enrica, later, right? Yesterday, we already presented our mini film club, our program for children aged between four and six to our French colleagues who work with an emphasis on nursery schools and on the primary schools target group and received much stimulating feedback. And of course, we learned a lot um, on the educational program for French kids in kindergarten. Today, I have decided to provide a bonus look, so to say, uh, behind the scenes and to permit you briefly, of course, to partic participate in the development of our mini film club format. For this concrete example of our daily work, we'll show the many questions that must be asked and the major obstacles that must be faced. Without being able to go into detail, the mini film club is a very special format, which kindergartens have been able to book with us since the beginning of the year. Yeah, some photos, please. <laughs> um, and at the same time, it is also a best practice example of what we've done in the AB Cinema framework in the last year. Children aged four, uh, from four to six come to us here for eight sessions, watch avant-garde and experimental films, follow that with creative work, then they go back into the cinema and watch the short films again with a sharpened perception. Mm, some pro problems over there, but you just listen to me, don't watch. <laughs> um, yeah. They watch the short films again with a sharpened perception and then, and this is most decisive, take a DVD of the film that was at the center of their visit back to the kindergarten. There, standing among the picture books, it can be viewed again and also shown to the other children. The mini film club is a very bold and innovative format. If I may be so immodest as to say so, very thoroughly developed education to film literacy at its best including work materials, material package, a continuation of training for educational professionals, involvement of parents and festive conclusion. The format was developed and this is a demand widely made in Germany when it comes to cultural education in close conceptual exchange with, educational, with education professionals from two kindergartens. In concrete terms, what this means is we in the team here after exhaustive viewings, for it is naturally important for us to know the films which with we work, created a long list of film titles, always the start. The viewings were preceded by research, that is, ordering DVDs from the library or purchasing them, researching via YouTube, as we all know. This long list was cut down in joint viewings with the educational professionals. And here already we have the question, did we do the right thing? Sometimes, for reasons of time, we gave DVDs that we have purchased or, now I must be honest, ripped from YouTube. <laughs> I mean, it's a closed circle of professionals, so I don't think we are alone with this, <laughs> uh, to our partners, so that they could watch them at home. When the first selection had been made, we began to work on suitable activity units and test them with three series of children. From our point of view, this was the and is the only way good new formats could emerge. Test, reject, refine, test again. A focal point for the mini film club and for the guiding principle of our film literacy work is the historical material, material, materiality of film and the cinema as a venue of experience. YouTube videos or even DVDs were not suitable for testing the format with children. We therefore consistently ordered films from various European archives, not least from our own, including comprehensive research into prints, clearing rights for individual screenings, the costs of transport and handling, a really complex and expensive process. A large proportion of my personal work time in film education is thus spent doing research into poten potential donors of funding, maintaining contacts, the work of persuasion and writing countless applications and progress reports. But back to the mini film club. Part of the concept already in the test phase was that after the visit, the DVD goes to the kindergarten. Film, and we're talking here not about Disney, but of films by Len Lai and Jan Schwankmeier, films gains entry into the kindergarten. An important point, in my opinion, even a cultural political statement. 
and for the format it means the sustainability expected of cultural education. But we simply didn't know which films would ultimately make it from the test phase to the final format. The children participated in the decision-making process by virtue of their own interest. Should we already at this point in time be clearing all rights and producing a DVD edition? In terms of staff and financial resources, it was unthinkable. Therefore, DVDs we had burned ourselves found their way into the kindergarten. This was a serious issue of conscience for us because, believe me, all of us here have a highly developed respect for artists and the rights of their works. The next step. After many tests, the format has emerged. We know which films we finally want, wish to include. But to have the film prints come from the various archive again for visit of each single kindergarten, again unthinkable. The format for children aged four to six is a already very stuff intensive one, and therefore relatively expensive for the kindergartens. So we need more money. We want to clear all rights and produce Blu-ray and DVD editions. You can find it outside. We are fortunate to, in having strong foundations in our side and they wanted an early childhood format from us and also the European Commission invests in film education. One more time, a new round of requests to all the various right holders. They reacted in very different ways to our requests and also asked for very different amounts. Jan Schwankmeier was visibly pleased with the children's fascination his, uh, with his game with stones and made the rights for both the Blu-ray screening copy and the DVD edition available to us without charge. Another director, on the other hand, took the view that everything would incur extra costs and asked for a relatively high payment. He did not accept our argument that it would cost less if an education professional privately purchased his DVD in a shop and showed it in the kindergarten. A daily practice, I guess. On the DVD um, is even, on this DVD of this director mentioned, any commercial or non-commercial screening, for example, in schools is not allowed. We also paid in order to be able to publish about the format, including the titles everywhere including stills and film clips on our website and in that of AB Cinema project. We were and still are full of doubts as to whether all that was really necessary. It, if it is a permanent group of children who all know each other, does that change anything? Under those conditions, it is supposed to be possible to show films in schools without charge. And are we not also an educational institution? Because we do this here in the cinema. In the context of ABC Cinema, in which a best practice exchange is naturally in the foreground, and as we are also putting together a film catalogue for use in film literacy education, a new round of requests is pending, according to the interests of our colleagues. Rights and licenses are naturally limited to specific countries, and that means that funds must once again be forthcoming. We will not be discouraged. We want the distribution and our worksheets are now available in F German, French and English. We hope to inspire cinematics, cinemas and kindergartens all over Europe with our project. We have, after all, proved that children can be enthusiastic about the abstract in film. A few weeks ago, our mini film club was nominated by the State Minister of Culture and Media for the most important German prize in cultural education. As one of ten projects, the others are projects in the fields of literature, art and theatre. For us, this marks an official recognition that we are doing educational work of enormous, enormous importance. But under what formidably difficult conditions? That is what I have been trying to illustrate. And permit me to add, a methodically and structured job of development in the area of film literacy can, in my experience, only be undertaken by institutions like ours. I know of no, no, school institution that works like we do. We are really an influential activity center for schools. That's also from your study, Mr. Knetz. Incidentally, a well-attended recent symposium dealing with the structural development of schools and cultural education in general also came to the conclusion. The key of the development of cultural education lies in the transfer of knowledge to schools from external educational facilities. In my opinion, cinematics are perfect for this.
I'm sure I speak for all of my colleagues, we are happy to gain more certainty about questions of rights today in this workshop and to advance in our professional exchange on the European level. AP Cinema is for me a strong group of institutions and also we are including a group inside the ACE network. Why not lobbying together for better conditions for our development? Thanks. Um, a warm welcome from me as well, <laughs> the third round. Um, I will reiterate some of the issues Claudia already mentioned because for a long time we've both been working together on ACE. So I want to say a few words about the association I'm working for. Um, the Association of European Cinematheques and French Association of European, uh, Quatsch, Association of Cine the Cinematheque Européenne is based in Brussels, but we also have the office here in Frankfurt due to the fact that Claudia was a longtime president of the association. But the home base is at the Cinematheque Royale in Brussels. ACE has 44 members, all important national and regional film archives and cinematheques. Um, some of the colleagues are here today. Um, and I think apart from um, Les Enfants du Cinema, they are all members also of the AP Cinema project. Um, one important task, Claudia mentioned it as well, is uh, for ACE is to lobby. Lob to do lobby work or advocacy work. This sounds nicer than lobbying, because at least in Germany, it's, it sounds strange. Lobbying is, has a very ne negative uh, impact. Uh, but as we are lobbying for good things, I mean, it's okay to say lobby. <laughs> <laughs> so advocacy simply means that um, ACE represents the interest of its members towards the Commission or other European bodies like the Parliament and the Council. Try to get some influence on their film heritage policy and the funding programs, of course, so that we, the film archives and cinematics, fit in a way in the Commission's calls for projects. So um, it's not um, self-evident, so it's a lot of work behind that these programs are set up. And this was also the case for AB Cinema. Um, so that this was and still is not an easy task, because Film Heritage is a very tiny player in this field compared, for example, to the rights holders organizations, which can lobbying more stronger because they have more money. But we had some success and by happy coincidence, three of the EU funded projects initiated by ACE will be presented today. Forward AFG and AB Cinema. Sorry for the row. I have just should have started with AB Cinema, but <laughs> Um, all these are collaborative projects carried out jointly by the film archives and, of course, some other partners, but the core group are the Cinematheques and the film archives. So, as I Claudia mentioned, copyright was always at the heart of ACE's lobby work, not because uh, we love it so much, but because rights is issues touch um, all our projects and activities, and in particular those who are about digitizing and making uh, our collections accessible, which is in a way true for all these three projects mentioned here. So all projects are carried out as part of our public mission. So collecting, preserving and promoting film heritage, because we all know about its huge cultural importance in defining both European history and identity as well as national cultures and identities. So we strongly feel that it should be made available for research, education, film literacy and of course leisure. For years, even decades, ACE followed the EU copyright reform initiatives closely. We joined forces with Europeana and other cultural players to improve the legal conditions for cultural, for film heritage institutions to make more content, more films, more related material available for non-commercial purposes and education. Our lobby work focused mainly on two categories of works, orphan works, works whose rights holders cannot be found 
or not located. And secondly, um, works out of commerce. These are films that are no longer uh, distributed commercially. Access to these works is blocked either because you cannot find the rights holder to ask for permission or a license or because rights holders do not show interest in um, digitizing films out of distribution or because they don't have the money to do so. In 2012, we succeeded with the first, we got the EU Orphan Works Directive, um, which permits um, film archives and other beneficiary institutions to use orphan works without a license, without asking the rights holder under certain conditions. I will talk about this later today. Regarding the second category, the out-of-commerce films, we are still struggling. From the experience of the Orphan Works Directors, we are not so sure if a legal solution is always the best solution. Germany has adopted a legislation for out-of-commerce books, but um, I have no experience how it works, whether it is, um, works well and what's the experience of the practice, so I don't know. ACE is awaiting the next proposals for a copyright reform, which will be published sometime this year. I hope Mr. Ignazi Gardans will talk about this also. And we will see um, in consultation with our members uh, which are the options we can lobby for, if there will be any. So this is not, not sure either. Coming back to the topic of the today, rights issues for film in education. So both Claudia and Tina pointed out that almost all cinematechs um, have been active in this field for decades. They have skilled staff and a long-standing experience in teaching what film is. They offer this great variety of um, activities, permanent locations, but the problem is how far can we go with what, with, with what we are doing? So what are we allowed to do in the frame of, for example, the copyright exception for education? To my understanding that this exception does not cover online purpose nor cross-border activities. So here rings the copyright bell. Um, the copyright exception for education allows the use of films and of course other content for the purpose of illustration for teaching. Does this cover entire films or only excerpts? What's the definition of teaching? Is there any room for interpretation? Are our film literacy activities covered by the exception? Or does it only apply to schools? Are we, cinematechs, but also film institutions and film education organizations, considered educational establishments in the meaning of the legislation? So I'm also looking forward to Lisette's um, speech. She will arrive later. Oh, she's already here. Hello, welcome. <laughs> she will certainly shed some light on all these questions. Uh, but there's also another problem. The copyright exception for education has been implemented differently in 28 member states. So which means that we deal with kind of 28 different legislations or interpretations of legislation. So in since years, ACE advocates for harmonizing these copyright exceptions across the member states because the lack of a harmonized copyright means that there's a lot of uncertainty for teachers, educational staff, and so many um, decided to go for a license agreement. So the Commission, as I said, they announced to tackle such issues like harmonization, uh, cross-border and online access. Um, um, and we will do our best to um, represent the interest of the archives. And I think, I hope this will also an outcome of today's discussions. What are the needs? What do we want? And can we pull them together as an input for the lobby work of ACE? So um, I will. Um, so we will certainly come back to you for your support, lobby-wise. I will close with a with an, um, with a short citation from uh, Alex Tarkovsky from the Communia. It was on. I found it on the Communia blog. It's called "Simply is Beautiful: Copyright Exceptions for Education." 
Education needs the same amount of freedom and flexibility, regardless if taken at a university or primary school, public or private school, local film club, library or NGO. Such a rule already exists in the InfoSoc Directive, this is the European Copyright Directive, but member states interpret the rule differently. Why should libraries or NGOs be exempted from using protected material while engaging educational activities? What is the public benefit in establishing different rules for, say, an art class, an extracurriculum study group, when both of those educational environments are run by the same teacher for students interested in contemporary cinema? So I think this is one of the points we should really make clear that we, all the cinematechs, are educational establishments to be recognized within this uh, exception for education. So, and also I think that education should be free for all. <laughs> and I like to introduce my colleague from the Cinematheca di Bologna, Enrica Zerani, coordinator of the AB Cinema Project. <laughs> 